Let's talk about plugins and Final Cut in general. I get a lot of people asking me questions about Final Cut. They know I'm a Final Cut guy. I like it. I've used it. I've been using it since it came out in 2011. I'm unapologetically uh, an advocate for Final Cut Pro 10. I, I think it's a great system. And this isn't a diss on any other platform. It's just the system we prefer to edit on. We find it extremely fast platform, fast to edit with. The, the metadata options are, uh, I, I think, are uh, unrivaled in terms of what you can do in terms of getting the data together before you even actually edit. Really powerful metadata uh, construct in Final Cut Pro 10, which is why we primarily like it. But a lot of people will, uh, will email me and, or they'll contact Travis or our guys and say, well, I, I don't get it. Why, why doesn't Apple just build OMF into the app? Or why doesn't Apple just build an EDL into the app? Or why doesn't it build some sort of a productivity? Because they want a clean interface and they want the interface primarily to be focused on editorial and so, as a result, all of these third parties have kind of like risen in the past four years. And we're talking literally thousands of plugins now are available for Front of Code Pro 10. And I kind of jokingly refer to the plugin market as, we used to say it with our, with our phone, like, there's an app for that. Well, now I finally say there's a plugin for that. So there's really... I can't really think of something that you can't do with Final Cut Pro 10 with a 30 third party plugin. I just, uh, just a moment ago, I was up here with editor Jan Kovac who edited uh, um, Focus and he edited the, uh, the, the new Tina Fake movie coming out, a Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, and he edited the whole film on Final Cut Pro 10 and he'll tell you it has everything you need to do a feature film work and using a, a, a few key third party plugins. In fact, you'll see some of those plugins tonight. In fact, there are some of the ones that Jan uses himself to do a lot of the previs, a lot of the, the post work, the, a lot of the pre-comping for the shots. You'll see some of that tonight. So, so this question of where is my, well, there's a plugin for that. The way we use Final Cut Pro 10 is we use it an, as an editorial tool, and then when we need a feature, we just kind of plug that feature in. So really, what I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you what we consider must-have plugins. Now, this is, list isn't exhaustive. It's my personal list. So you might be thinking, well, I use this, or I use great. But this is what we use. And I'm going to try to tell you why we use these particular tools. And hopefully, along the way, you'll be like, wow, I didn't know it could do that, or that's really cool. And you'll see that these plugins are all very reasonable. Any, they range in price from anywhere from $29 to $100. Uh, and you know, you're just, again, just plugging in all this functionality into this very, very powerful app. So I broke in the plugins down into categories so you can just quickly see what I call fix it in post plugins, color grading plugins, uh, titles and graphics, audio, and productivity. So that's kind of what I want to focus on tonight, just kind of th those categories. So without further ado, I am going to jump into Final Cut because you don't want to see me do a keynote presentation for sure. So I'm in Final Cut Pro 10. One of the things that I really like about Final Cut Pro 10 is you, you hide the panes you're not working. It's like com Command Control 1 hides a browser, you know, Command uh, 5 hides the event. And I tend to like to work like this because it keeps a really clean interface and it just keeps me focused on what I want to work on, which is the picture. I don't, don't need to see all those other windows when I want them. I call it progressive disclosure. Command Control 1 reveals that pane and then when I don't want to see it, I close it up. Progressive disclosure. So. So here's, um, the last guest was talking about a spec commercial that he did and he got a million dollars. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. I, you know, OWC, you guys any bought anything from OWC? They sell hardware. Well, they ran a contest over the summer and they wanted to promote their products and they put out a bid to do a commercial. Unfortunately, I didn't quite understand the nature of the contest. It was really about how many likes you can get on your face. Uh, uh, and it's so that, uh, and I really worked hard, and it's like, oh yeah, people liked it, but it, there wasn't like an impartial panel. Of, anyway, that said, I shot this commercial, and it's basically a, a, this kid. It's only three seconds, so I might as well show it to you because I'll, I have this one little uh, thing that I used a plugin for. So let me let me just play it for you.
So as with all commercials, you're selling something. And this commercial, I was selling love. <laughs> right? Buy this drive, get the girl. Right? That's really what the commercial was about. Now, as you can see here, he's excited about his thing that he filmed with his GoPro camera. And he wants to impress a girl. And he's showing her on his iPad. But of course, I need a replacement screen there. And this is where the first plug-in came to be. And this is a great plug-in. It's a company called Cormelt. And you may have heard of it. Um, it's a, a product called Track X, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the generators, and here it is, Track X. So really easy to work with. So I'm going to park my playhead right over the shot, and I'm going to press X to mark an in and out point. Then I'm going to go over here to this track layer, and I'm going to press Q. And what that does is it matches that particular effect that matches the duration of the clip below it. I'm going to go ahead and select the track layer, and I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And you have some instructions here about what to do. Basically, you want to create a shape for tracking. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click, click here. And I'm just, I'm just going to go, actually, let me do this real quick. All right. So I typically, when I use this, because I know I'm going to be tracking this forward, I'm going to go ahead and move this playhead right to the beginning. I'm going to start right here. And Notice you have a bunch of shapes. You have you know, some rectangles and you have some polygons and some free shape tools. I like this tool a lot for creating masks because a lot of times you have kind of parallel lines or easy. Uh, you're just going to drag along here and I'm going to follow the shape of this um, I iPad screen. I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then I'm going to close up the mask. All right, now I'm also going to zoom in just so you can see a little bit better um, what I'm doing here. All right, and the reason I'm going to do that is because now I'm going to just make some finessing to this mask. I'm going to just grab that green dot. I'm just going to go ahead and line it with the edge. This is a planner tracker. It's going to track this surface using kind of the pixel. It's looking at the contrast between the screen and, uh, and the bezel there. Now all I really need to do is track it. And I'm just going to go ahead and click this little track forward button here and just click that. OK, so it's tracking it there. And it's all determined on the speed of your CPU, how fast it will be. I'll go ahead and just play that. There it is. There's, there it is. And now I want, want to replace the screen. So I'm going to click this surface button. And you can see there, that's kind of a temporary, like a placeholder image. I'm going to press Command-4 to open the inspector. And you'll notice there's an image well. That's where I'm going to drop my replacement image. Command-Control-1 to reveal the browser. And the, the image I want is over here, this, this helmet cam image. I'm going to use that. So, and the reason is, is I, I, shot, I, I shot a downhill race, and then I sped it up. So it's really kind of his point of view. Because remember, he had that helmet, that GoPro camera mount, mounted to his helmet there. So I'm going to select this track layer. I'm going to go ahead and select this well. It's going to ask me what image I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and skim to the frame I want to start on. The skimmer will determine where the image starts. I'm going to go ahead and click. And then I'm going to click Apply Clip. And as soon as I do that, let me go ahead and Command Control 1 to close that. I'm going to go ahead and do a fit. I'm going to do a fit, um, fit to window. And we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at this. And then I, try, I wanted to show you how fast it is to work with this plugin. So, so there it is. I mean, it's, it, it's, and there you know, it's tracks are there. And you can make the adjustments. The idea is you can do screen replacements really, really quickly uh, with TrackX. Right, so uh, I believe that plugin by itself is 100 bucks okay, from Cormel. Um, let me show you quickly another use for the tr tracking plugin. I'm, I'm going to go to the projects. And I'm going to show you another instance of, of a, a, a tracking thing here. I mentioned earlier that I like to do a lot of uh, underwater photography. And it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's kind of a hobby of mine. So I have all this stuff that was shot in the Caribbean. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here, you see that little, I guess, that little piece of schmutz right there? <laughs> OK. That, that was me not cleaning the inside of my dome port of my camera. So yeah, exactly. So really, uh, that is just really there. And you could, 
you know, maybe not see, but it's, it's just right in my face and I wake up at two in the morning thinking about it kind of thing, right? So I have a great plugin. There's another great plugin for this. Um, like I said, there's a plugin for that. Um, I go back uh, to effects and you'll notice, let's see here, um, there's a plugin called Slice X, and there's a number of different, different options here. The one that I used here was called Object Remover. And I already have it pre-applied, so I don't have to kind of go through what I did previously, but you'll notice I have it turned off right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Now watch, watch that little piece of whatever junk there. I'm gonna go ahead and click the object and turn it on, and it's just immediately gonna go away. What it does is it samples a pixel, you pick an offset, and it'll sample the pixels and you can change the offset and you're and I'm actually taking you know pixels from this area to cover that little area there and that's all I did and I tracked it using the same method I showed you before which was uh, just using this little track tracking button so now I'll go ahead and, uh, and I'll go ahead and play it for you so you can see that pretty much saved my bacon on this there it's just gone and uh, and just distract it Ah, I can sleep at night again. <laughs> right. So that was my, uh, both of those plugins, SliceX, TraxX, you can get them from Cormel for about 200, but I think we're running a special. I just saw it on the web. It's a 149 for both of them. I think it's a must have for Final Cut Pro 10. All right. So um, I'm going to show you some color grading, uh, useful, useful color grading options that you're going to want. All right. So I've got this timeline open. Give me set command four, close that up. The first one I want to talk about is this $29 utility called LUT Utility. Of course, LUT stands for lookup look table, right? And look, the short, answer, the short description is you've got these cameras like the Canon C100 or even a you know, Blackmagic has all this dynamic range and you know, televisions can't display all that dynamic range, so these really smart people have to come in and write these algorithms to take all that data and squish it into a smaller space, right? And that's where you get the flat look, right? So this is shot flat. This, this was shot with a C100 Mark II, that camera right there. And it was shot uh, flat, uh, when they called Canon Cinema Profile. But a lot of times you don't want to work with it flat. You want to apply a lot so it looks more natural, like in what they call Rec 709. It looks like more pleasing colors. And how do you apply a lot in Final Cut? So we'll look at this LUT utility. It's really great. So I'm going to go down to, let's see, color. And let's see, no, actually, LUT utility, because when you install it, there it is. So I'm going to grab this LUT utility, and I'm just going to drop it right on the clip, and I'm going to press Command 4 and open up the inspector. And notice it says apply LUT. Right now, there is no LUT applied. You can see that, no LUT applied. But I'm going to apply a LUT, and there's all, there's all kinds of built-in LUTs. Here it is, Canon Log to Rec. 709. So I just select it, and boom, just like that, it applies the LUT. 29 bucks has all these LUTs built into it. And then at that, that looks a little heavy handed to me in terms of contrast, which you can then mix down by using this little slider here. You can just drag this and kind of mix, mix you know, how much of the, the LUT you want in the image, which is really handy. Uh, let's do another example. I'm gonna jump down to this. This was shot by my friend Abba, and uh, this is a black magic cinema camera. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the LUT there. And this time you'll see that this one is like black magic film to Rec. 709, and just like, oops, yeah, you can, yeah, there you can see, you can, there we go. Instantly, you get a good looking image by playing these LUTs. So $29 utility is really great. Now, let me show you some fun stuff that I think it's really great. One thing to bug me, I don't want to sit there and have to apply a bunch of LUTs one at a time. And you can't, in Final Cut, you can't select a bunch of clips and apply a LUT to like you can in Resolve. So I have a really, really useful thing you want to know. So let's say, for whatever reason, I like this LUT applied. Final Cut allows you to save an effect preset and then name it and put it in whatever category you want. And in, in fact, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again, but I can name this LUT, you know, Canon 709, what have you, and I can store it in a custom category or what have you. I already created it. So in fact, let me go ahead and uh, remove this LUT. And I'm going to, I know these, these clips are the same right here, so I'm going to select them both and just drag this Canon log and then I can just you know drag them on there or double click but here's what's new uh, Apple came out with a recent update 10.2.3 right and one of the things they've added was this ability to add a shortcut right now it says add color correction option E will quickly add a color correction to your clip without you having to select the clip or without you having to take any action by dragging 
that a particular filter onto the clip. So check it out. All you have to do now is, let's say I wanted to turn this into a lot that I plan on using all the time. Control click, make default video effect. This is new. And so now um, you can just select both of those and then uh, you can use option E or whatever. There it is, look, add Canon log to 709. It's right there as a shortcut now. Boom, there it is. So you can then select 20, 30, 40, 50 clips, boom, apply your LUT, you're ready to go. It's, uh, it's a pretty fast way to work. Let's look at something called Color Finale. This is a same company, Color Grading Central, $100 plugin, and it includes LUT utility, but it has so much more. I'm gonna click over here, and I'm just gonna drag this on top of the clip, and I'm gonna go back to the inspector, and you'll notice it says Color Finale, it shows up here, and I'm gonna click Open. Now, the great thing about Color Finale is it has a built-in UI. So here's the UI, and it's, like, it's, it's empty or blank at first, and the first thing you're gonna like about it, and this is why this is, to me, a must-have plugin, Curves. So you got to have the curves. Um, I know Final, uh, Premiere has really great curves with their Lumetri, Lumetri, potato to pot, potato. Uh, curves are really important. In this case, what I want to do is maybe just kind of create a light, nice little S curve and maybe you know bring down the shadows a little bit and then uh, you know punch up the highlights. Just this is fairly common kind of a thing that you would do with a uh, with a curve. And I'm not going to mess with these right here. I'm just gonna do a simple S curve for luminance. And now I want to add, you know, I want to work with the, uh, the lift, gamma, and gain controls. So I'm going to go ahead and add these color wheels. So I've added color wheels here. And you can see I have lift, lift gamma, and gain here. And uh, maybe I want to do is I want to push, you know, he's looking kind of depressed. You know, who knows what happened. There's, he's, you know, there's no girl there. Yeah, he said, yeah, he said, yes. <laughs> it's a Boulevard of Broken Dreams. And so he's... Uh, <laughs> He's not happy in La La Land. So what I want to do is I want to move the color. So I'm going to just I'm going to work on the highlights here. So I'm just going to grab this little puck here, and I'm just going to kind of move this. Um, it, it's the thing is is that it's look if you like color wheels, you're gonna you're gonna really love this. You want to cool down the image here, and then maybe I'll bunch bunch up the sat you know move up the sat a little bit, and then we can kind of see. Um, what's really nice is you can check these boxes. So you can do a kind of a before and after with these little boxes here, the color wheels, you can kind of see what you're, what you're doing to the images. Uh, I, I actually think it's a very good idea to grade with scopes. You can see when I did push the gain blue, uh, I've got the parade scope open here. You can see I'm adding a lot more uh, blue to the image here. Um, added some saturation. And I can keep going here, but I, I wanna reserve some of the other ones here for something else. I'm gonna go ahead and close this for now. Nice thing is you can, save this as an effect just like before I showed you with the LUT you can do save effect and you can call this you know I know Hollywood uh, uh, sorrow whatever and uh, and uh, <laughs> and you could you could name you could name the effect and then apply <laughs> apply it to <laughs> apply it to whatever image you want um, which is great um, remember I said that you don't have to buy the LUT utility if you get color finale well, you'll see that now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this image and I'm gonna throw on color finale. This was sh shot with the, Sony, the awesome Sony A7S II. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, this is Otto's camera. I can't own every camera. I wanna own every camera. I'd love to own every camera in the world. And, but anyway, this is a great camera. That's the Sony A7S. And does it not look flat? It looks flat to me. It's, it's flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into color finale and, and this time I'm gonna click this cube because LUTs are in that kind of a 3D space, a cube space, so I'm gonna click that. And um, you'll notice that all the LUTs will appear here, okay? There they are. But here's what's really neat. If I click launch, I can launch the cube manager. The cube manager, <laughs> yeah. So I got this little LUT manager, cube manager. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click this plus button and my friend Abba, out of Premiere, he saved me a Sony A7 Night Shot Cube LUT that I can click and I can just open that up and now it shows in there. In fact, I can even add a folder. I can say Abba's LUTs. 
<laughs> is that awesome? And now I just grab the LUT and then just I can drop it right in there. And now I have Abba's LUTs in his Abba's LUTs folder. That sounds weird, I know. All right, so uh, close that up. And under the LUT group, actually, one thing that's a little weird, uh, I, I, so Denver, the owner of Color Green, if you're watching this, uh, this could be a little better. I, I have to close that down and then reopen the interface for that LUT to appear. It shouldn't be that, but that's the way it is. There it is, Abba's LUTs. And there it is, the only LUT I put into it, click Apply, <laughs> custom LUT created in Premiere, applied in Final Cut Pro 10. Pretty awesome. Yeah, yay. All right. Yes, so one more thing with Color Finale that it's pretty, pretty awesome. I'm going to go to this last shot of Abba and his brand new little, uh, um, yeah, uh, um, he, his uh, midlife crisis car, sorry. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that and drop that, drop that on there. And I'm going to click open. And one other feature about this, that's, I just, this is a good way to end this one. I'm going to click this little button here. And check it out, you have these colors. This is very much like the Lumetri color palette where you can choose a color like, I'm working on red, but I don't really like it in red. I'm just gonna push it towards orange. Or maybe a little bit more magenta. And I can saturate it. Oh, I'm there, and I can play with the luminosity. And just like that, I've completely, you know, changed the color of the car. Yeah, it is a little cheap, but look, I'm telling you, in a hurry and you got to do something, this is a great tool to be able to like change map, you know, map. There was another red car back maybe, uh, yeah, that we'd have a problem and I'd have to mask that. Or I'd have to track it with Slice X or Track X. So, but I just, now you know you have a plugin for that, for this. Yeah. This is a must have plugin. And I'm going to go hit, yeah, Command and Control 1. And I really, this plugin, Really, I, I kept it in the color grading category. It, it really is like an effect, but a lot of what this does is, well, remove noise. You know, with these cameras being so, I mean, they're sucking in all this light on the sensor. Even, even in the perfect ISO, like that camera shoots it, its native ISO is around 800, that Canon C100, that's its native ISO. And then even then, in certain fields, you'll still see noise. And th there's no camera that's not gonna produce it, some less, but there's always, there's gonna be some artifacting noise that you wanna remove. That's why you have to have this product called Neat Video. It's, it's really, it's, you have to have this thing. Um, and I'm gonna close the color, let's say I'm gonna command control one, and I'm gonna scroll down, there it is. It's Neat Video. I like that name, it's Neat. It's neat. Um, and you, on this best to see, yeah, it is the bestest plug in other. I'm just gonna zoom in and you could definitely see, I shot this aquarium and you could definitely see noise. See that, that noise in there is. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw the neat video reduce noise V4 filter on top there. And really the way the plugin works, it, it works on, it works at spatial, it, it works interframe the space, look, it's analyzing pixels, it's lo looking at areas of the frame that don't have a lot of detail. Uh, like in this case, it's specifically looking for areas here where there's the back of the camera, there's blue, there's nothing there. And it does a fine job of, of being able to separate the, the actual subject, the detail from the noise. It's, good. it's, it's pretty incredible. And then it also is, uh, it's temporal compression, so it's always comparing one frame to other frames to give the best possible uh, noise reduction. And so, if, to just to open this, I'm just going to click open. It has its own interface. It's going to go ahead and just uh, pop this thing open. There it is. And so there it is. There's the frame that I'm working on. Now, if you want it to work right out of the box, you really need it to create what's called a profile. It's going to create a noise profile for this frame. And one of the neat things about this is if you're shooting with the same camera, you can save that profile because that camera has a noise profile, depending on the ISO and the, uh, the, the, um, the f-stop things you're shooting, you can apply, you can have a save profile for a given camera. So in this case, I'm gonna just click this auto profile button and see what happens. And it'll say, okay, noise level 4.2 with a quality of saying, this sample, this noise sample, 61%, that's a pretty good percentage in terms of quality of the sample for that noise. Now, I could go in here and say, you know what, I don't like 60, maybe I wanna expand it out a little bit more, and then uh, auto profile it again, 
and see if it gets, that's at 61%, not, not much better there. But point is you can move that box to different areas or not, just let it do its thing. And then when you're done, you just click apply. And what I'm gonna do is click off the plugin for a moment. I'm gonna click off the clip and click back on and I just kind of refresh the screen. And I'm gonna turn the filter off. I just, let me see if I can zoom in here. So, yeah, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, do you guys see the, see the noise? Okay, now you should be able to, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. You, you, I mean, you could, it, it's, it's pretty dramatic. I mean, there you go. See, that's, that's with the, the filter on. And it holds the detail. It's a, it's a must-have filter. It's you just one of those ones that are really got to have in your toolbox, especially if you're doing with, shooting with a lot of different digital cameras. All right, let's move on. I, again, I, don't, I wish I could camp on any one really for a long time, but can't. If you wouldn't mind, let's, let's, we've done color grading. We did um, effects, you know, fix it in post, color grading. Let's take a look at some graphics and effects things that I think are really worth, worth knowing about. And this is uh, my own uh, shameless plug, is that we, we, produce a, we produce a plugin called Callouts. And what Callouts do is they allow you to highlight things in the frame, make, you know, magnify things, make lines with like text to come out so you can, you can do things like, you know, freeze the image and then, you know, have the text come on and then, yeah, and you can do things like, you know, really make like a bouncing, Bouncing arrow, 3D arrows, and then you could do things like, uh, in, this, in this case, you know, really nice little interface. We could just move this around. You could uh, you drag this little ball. You can point the little arrow where you want it to. You could change the emoji that's in the center. You can go ahead and you can change the color. I mean, there are so many controls uh, for these these callouts. And let me go ahead and show you uh, how many callouts there are. There are actually titles. So. If you go to the titles section, and you'll, when you install them, uh, they will be in a section called Ripple Callouts. And you'll see them, all, we, we just came out with version 3.0 two days ago, and we've improved them, we've added more, we've made them easier, uh, you know, more functionality. Um, we've, we've broken them into categories, so they're much easier to find now. You have, you know, boxes and arrows and, all kinds of things, and they're really designed to annotate your video if you need to call attention to something. And we came up with this three years ago, and this has been very, very popular plugin because you know a lot of times you want to just call something, attention to something. One thing that's new that we did is we added iOS device uh, gestures. So we do a lot of screen captures. Obviously, we're a tutorial company, and we were using ScreenFlow doing a lot of this. Well, was like, well, why don't we create a plugin where we could just do a lot of the pinching and swiping and zooming? right in Final Cut. So now you can add pinch, swipe, zooms to your screen captures. If you're using Camtasia or if you're using ScreenFlow, whatever, you can just now apply these right to, uh, right to, your, um, right to your images. Okay. Uh, no, they are not trackable, but that is, they, well, let me take that, but yes, they are. You can, if you have TrackX, you can use TrackX and callouts together and you can track them. Um, what we'd really like to do at some point is add the Imagineering, uh, actually work with it, actually have the tracking built into the plugin. So that's something we're looking at in the future. Right now they're $59, they're regularly $79. If, you, if you're interested in these, they're a really good time to get them because they're $20 off and really, really useful for, for um, you know, documentaries, how-to videos, uh, whatever, you, whatever you need to do. Um, okay, so that's that's. That's call out. For us, we, we use it all the time. You know that uh, Apple introduced 3D text back in um, back at NAB. And I have to say that 3D text, the, the rendering, the engine for the text is just incredible. I mean, the amount of, the, you can create what I call network, broadcast, cinematic quality 3D titles with a very simple, simple interface. I created this little, like a, what I call a superhero uh, fly-through. I created this in like 15 minutes, just completely with Final Cut Pro. This is all done in Final Cut with a 3D text and a plug-in 
called uh, M. Flair, which I'll show you in a moment. But do you notice how these, these, these text items, notice how that it's moving towards the screen? I should point out that if you do use 3D text in Final Cut, you'll notice they have some animation presets right here, built in, if I go to, uh, if I go to 3D, there's some animation presets in here. These are, these are okay, but they don't have a lot of functionality. In other words, you can't keyframe a lot of the parameters in the built-in ones. So here's what I'm gonna recommend you do. If you need the text to fly towards the screen and to keyframe, like what I was just showing you, like moving through a letter, what have you, we have a free plugin called Ripple 3D Animations. And these, you can go up to FX Factory. In fact, let me just show you. FX Factory is how our plugins are delivered. You download this app, and it, you know what FX Factory is? It's like an app store for plugins. And that's where you'll find our plugins and plus many others. And you can download, they're managed all through FX Factory. You can turn them on, you can turn them off. And what's really great about this, if you want to experiment, you can, you can literally download every plugin and play with it. And you're like, I really like this, and then buy it right from the Final Cut Pro 10. So it's a really nice way to interact with plugins, and you'll see we have more than, well, we have more than a few plugins here on, in our category, all managed through FX Factory. So what I'm saying is the Ripple 3D animations, it's free. So you just go up to FX Factory, download them, and then you'll be able to do things like keyframe and work in, in true, you know, spa 3D, uh, Z space, XYZ. You'll have a lot more functionality. The other thing that it's really fun is we have these plugins uh, called 3D Drops. Let me just throw, you, throw this on here. Um, I get this question all the time. Um, I really would like to be able to, put, can I put my own texture on instead of the ones that are built into Final Cut? I, mean, I don't want just metal or paint. I'd like something you know, interesting, something germane to what the product is that I'm working on. So what I'm gonna do is open the inspector and you'll notice there's a drop well here. I'm gonna click 3D materials. Now, just for fun, what I did was um, I, at the, during the break or just before the break, I, I went out and I, I, say, I took some shots of my iPhone. Like, there's the, there's the wall outside by the bathroom there. And I've just selected my iPhone and it's, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the, no. So I've applied that texture from the bathroom and it's perfectly, like, it's just freaking amazing. Um, let me go ahead and do another one just for fun of it. I think there's some fun ones in here. I, there's, I don't know, the, the door of the bathroom, right? So, <laughs> right. So there's the door of the bathroom. And look, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's rendered so well. And there's a lot more you can do with these. I'm just kind of quickly showing you if you, and then of course I took a picture of my dog, Darla's fur. And I, that's kind of fun. And then this is her fur. So um, that's her fur map to 3D text. So uh, really a $29 plugin and you could put whatever material you want on your 3D text and then animate it. And then you apply, and then you combine this with that free animation and there's pretty much nothing that you can't do with 3D text in terms of customizing it. So pretty fun. One thing that I would highly recommend is um, I, I have a plugin. Uh, this is another plugin from a, this, this company in Poland. It's called Motion VFX. And this guy, I don't even know how he sleeps. He's cranking out plugins all the time. And uh, he has the best, I think, uh, lens flare plugin out there. It's freaking amazing. And in fact, let me see uh, if I go to effects. It's called M Flares. Do you see it there? Oh yeah, thank you. And really good, so you have these things called M Flares and he's, he's rendered out all these amazing flares and, and, and you can customize these to the nth degree. There's a, there's a separate interface for these things. And what I did is I just threw this one flare on this background and um, let me select it here and go to video. All, there's all these parameters that you can animate the, the, you know, the position of the flare, you can animate these. I'm, it's just a high quality look at flare there. I have one over here that I added to this, and you, and you can see it here. Um, I added a flare here. I, it's really, I'm gonna just grab this, you just move it on. You can even see there's a, a, a reflection of the lens actually in this flare. You can see the kind of the, the shape of the lens there. I mean, really high quality stuff. And if you really wanted to go further, like I said, you can customize it. You click this edit button, and this brings up this, in this interface called the M-Flare interface. And 
you can go in crazy and edit this flair however you want. And uh, you just go through and let's play with the streak. I really, you know, the streak size needs to be bigger and maybe I'll down and bring the distance and move it over here. And then I want to go ahead and uh, go to this iris and maybe the iris needs some, you know, scaling up or down or you just customize it. And then you save it as a preset and it shows up in Final Cut Pro, that preset. Amazing, amazing plugin uh, for lens flares. And the reason I'm showing you is lens flares and 3D text kind of go together like, you know, Batman and Joker. I mean, bad, bad example, uh, you know, just, they just, yeah, Batman and Robin, they, right, so really, really good, good combination, I, it's just 99 bucks and you have a seriously cool um, lens flare generator, and again, all keyframeable, all anim animatable, animatable, yeah, really great stuff. This is a product from a company called Isotope. They have two versions, this is a must have, uh, they have a $300 version, and let's see, it's, and then they have a $1,100 version. Guess what? You don't need the $1,100 version. The $300 version is all you'll need. And um, I'm gonna, I deliberately shot this uh, with some re, in a re, noisy environment. I'm gonna go to, let's see, where is it down here? It's in a section called Isotope. All these plugins here. Um, how many of you? Just, look, all of us have struggled with reverb. We shoot in a kind of environment that we just want to pull down the kind of the, the, yes, the reverberiness of the room, right? So I had him record this. This is Spencer. I'm reading the preamble of the U.S. Constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. So there's some boominess there, and I, I have no idea how this is going to sound there, but I'm just going to grab this isodope de-reverb, and I'm just going to drop that right on there. And there's an interface for it. You can click on here and you bring up this little interface. Let's see here. Yeah, it's the D-reverb. And so you can have it learn. So you can, you can learn. Provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish. Okay, so what it's doing, it's kind of trying to figure out where kind of the refractions are happening and, and uh, you get kind of a waveform. There's a lot of control in here. My goal is just to show you like out of the box kind of what it could do. Um, you could, you have a bypass filter so you can do a before and after. Let's see here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and deliberately bring up the reduction here. People of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. It's kind of probably hard to tell, but it, 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 we use it all the time, and we, we get voiceover from people, and it's just, you know, it's just, we put this thing on there, and it just does a really, really, really great job. Um, that, that, that's one plugin we use, and uh, another one that we use is called the Dialogue Denoise. And how many, how many of us have been in the field where we've got this interview and oops the mic didn't work and we, we have to deal with the on-camera mic and that's all we have because we didn't somebody didn't put the batteries in or what that that's never happened to you right so, so you just got to deal with the audio you have this thing is she's this is pretty noisy um i don't know happiness to me is being with people I so i'm going to just throw this dialogue denoiser I, again i have no idea it's going to sound in here but um, just throw it on there and this is uh let's see here Went to audio and let's see, do, 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 do noise. And you can, again, you could, uh, you could just have it play. And it's My unresolution is to like chill out about doing that and like have a really good time while I'm writing in my spare time. It has nothing to do with Delphina at all. <laughs> and you can tweak it, but this is an excellent, excellent denoiser. Really something that you have to have in your toolkit. Really useful, 300 bucks and there's an app for that. Or excuse me, plug in for that. All right, um, the last thing I wanna show you is, I wanna, is I wanna show you something from Intelligent Assistance um, called Producer's Best Friend, and it's our friend Philip up there. Really, really useful, um, useful little utility. I said utilities are useful in that 
like have a bunch of mark notice I have a bunch of markers here a producer needs some notes like for example I want to know what clips uh, we have licensing rights for which ones we don't maybe I want to send notes off to the composer or, or maybe I'm doing a, a stock footage and I want to just you know give a, a, a just a dump of everything in the timeline in, in the form of a spreadsheet this is this is fantastic so really the steps are you export an XML okay which I'm not going to do because I already did it and then you open producers best friend okay and then you you navigate to that XML file right so you navigate to the XML file let's see if I have it in here let's see there it is there it is like open it and it analyzes it and then it shows you here all of your how your roles are tagged your effects your dialogue it'll actually show up here it'll spit all this information out if you wanted to you can have it do clips or enable clips and here's where I found it really is you could decide what what do you want to add to the report a summary sheet markers keywords titles generators you can pretty much everything you want and then you just save it as a spreadsheet and when it's done it will open in what either Excel or numbers whatever spreadsheet program you're working with and there it is there's it opens as a spreadsheet look at there it shows you my roles it's my video there's my dialogue there's my effects it's just it's literally will see you view hours and hours of work there's my hard effects there's my Foley effects because I broke everything down to roles I know exactly what these are I can give these this cue, essentially a cue sheet to my to my sound guy or my sound girl and uh, really, really, really useful.